We're good. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. There we go. That was it. That was it. We've got some stragglers, but uh, but it is all good. I'm glad that the people that are here are here right now, and uh, I thank God for each and every one of y'all. I pray that y'all had a good day. I know it's hot. It is hot. And yes, is what in the world? Hey, what's playing? Is that me? Yeah, turn the laptop down on the monitors. There you go. I was hearing myself talk back to me. I was like, oh, my goodness, that's crazy. That's crazy. Don't know how y'all stand that. But uh, anyway, I pray everyone's having a good day. It is hot out there, seriously hot. Fat people, we sweat. Man, sweat it, sweat, sweat, sweat. But uh, it's good. Went to the doctor today, got a clean bill of health. Praise God. My blood pressure was lower than it's ever been, which is surprising. I don't know. Man, things are good. Things are good. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to come together to worship, to hear your word, to raise a, a beautiful noise to your ear, Lord. Lord, I pray that just we honor you today, Lord. I pray that we are thankful for the things that we have, Lord. And I pray that as we, as we come together as a congregation, as we come together as a people, that we learn to work together towards the goals that we want to achieve, Lord. Lord, all of the things that have been laid out before the world right now, we will never overcome them unless we come together in your holy name, Lord. You are the, 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 the tie that binds us, Lord. Allow us to reach to you now, Lord, to call out your name, Lord, and to cling to you, Lord, because without you, we are lost. Lord, I thank you for the individuals that are here. I thank you for the individuals that are listening at home, Lord. And Lord, I just pray. I pray that we do your word justice, and I pray that, that as, we, as we congregate and as we worship, that the Holy Spirit comes into this house of the Lord and fills each and every one of us, Lord. May we, be, may we become what it is that you want us to be, Lord. Lord, as we receive your word, may your, your way be revealed to us, Lord. And in the things that we are doing in our lives, the sins that we have tucked in the back of our heads, Lord, may we let go of those things, Lord. May we hand those things to you, just like we do our tithe and offering, Lord. May we give those things gladly to you, Lord, because we know that you will fix them. Lord, we, we just stand in awe of all that you are, and we stand in awe of, of, of what you have given us, Lord. Thank you for your creation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, and thank you for, for loving us through all of the hardships. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. All right, well, um, as far as announcements go, uh, on Wednesday, we're going to have our online Bible study. It starts at 7 p.m. It is on Facebook Live. It's a um, fun and exciting trip right now through Leviticus. Um, I don't know how many of y'all, how many of y'all have read Leviticus before? There you go. There you go. It's fun, isn't it? What? You need to, you need to watch the Bible study. We make Leviticus fun. The Lord, made, the Lord made Leviticus fun. I do enjoy the Old Testament. You are absolutely correct. And I enjoy the, the, the Old Testament because without the Old Testament, I would never understand the New Testament. So it is important for us to do that. And it's always good to, uh, to, to, to receive that because as, even as I teach it, I, I get questions and I, I find the answers. And, um, and some of the questions that are asked by the people in the Bible study, they're amazing. They're amazing. And, uh, you know, what we see as we go through the Old Testament is we see that, that God is a constant. God never changes. God has always been the same. God has always wanted the same thing. And uh, we as people, though we feel like we've advanced, maybe we have some new technologies, maybe we have some new uh, gadgets that we get to play with, maybe some things have changed as far as transportation. Maybe uh, instead of fighting with uh, stones and spears, we fight with, with rifles and handguns. But, but nonetheless, people have pretty much remained the same as well. So um, please join us. Uh, the good thing about that is if you can't catch it live, uh, you can catch the replay on Facebook because it stays up. And uh, you're always welcome to add questions. Uh, on Sunday, uh, we have service at 11 a.m. Had a great service this weekend, I thought. I mean, phew, praise worship killed it. Praise the worship killed it. I didn't even need to preach after that. Didn't even, I, did, I just mailed it in. Just mailed it in. Um, then uh, July the 26th, 
That's going to be our primary uh, service project. We'll have other service projects. Don't you worry. We got some handrails to put up. We got some other things to do. We've got plenty of service projects, but our primary service project this month is going to be uh, the master's table at uh, West Main Christian. Uh, Pastor Jeff Dowd, he is gosh, he's one of the smartest men I've ever met. But he can make me smile. He he can be just as goofy as, as you as you want to get. But he uh, he's going to bring the word that night, and I know it's going to be amazing because he has such an insight uh, to to how he delivers scripture. The first time I heard him preach, I was a little a little confused. I was like, Man, what what is going on? Because he 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 sees the scripture like he's standing there, and and he tells a story. And then he comes to the theological point, and it just it, it, it smacks you in the face. You didn't know it was coming. And uh, so he is, uh, he is an amazing pastor, an amazing man. He's been running uh, West Main Christian down there for over 20 years, uh, feeding the homeless two, two days a week, making sure that uh, they receive not only food but also receive the Word of God. Um, he do, he's, he's done an amazing job, and it's going to be an honor to help him. Um, we're also partnering that day with uh, Ethan Magnus's church, uh, First Christian. And uh, so uh, since we can't do the inside meal, last time we did chili, Nikki made some amazing chili. Woo, it was so good. So good. But this time we're going to do burgers and hot dogs on the grill. It's going to be a cookout. Uh, who knows? We may bring some tambourines and guitars and lyres and, and bagpipes. I don't know. We may, we may bring a, a big old bass drum to play. I, we, we might do something, but uh, that's going to be July the 26th. And then August the 29th, that is the fifth Sunday. You know, our fifth Sunday, we usually do a, a potluck again because of COVID. We can't do a potluck. So what are we going to do? We're going bowling. We're going to leave the church and we're going to the bowling alley. I'm going to have a trophy. I'm going to win that trophy, too. I'm going to beat every single one of y'all at bowling. I am. I see Scott shaking his head back. Scott's probably like, uh, he's, probably, uh, he's probably got his own ball with like a goldfish in the middle of it. Got his own like gold bowling shoes. I bet he makes it, I bet he starts it over here and it curves in there and it strikes every time. <laughs> we should do the things that you put in the gutters to keep it from, from going in there. Um. Other than that, I can't think of any announcements. Uh, Nikki has ordered the T-shirts. ZZ Tops uh, will have them in as soon as possible. Um, I'm looking forward to that because I need some new T-shirts to play golf in. Uh, I always like to wear the church T-shirts because people get to see, you know, what they say on the back. But uh, other than that, you got anything, Nikki? Anything you want to share today? Nope. Did Sadie do anything interesting today? All right, so our baby is now biting. All right, exciting stuff. Our baby is now biting. Um, good, good stuff. Wait, good job, Mom. Good job. All right. Well, with no further ado, if everyone will please stand for a time of praise and worship.
Praise the Lord tonight. Uh, I, I love singing, and I love singing for the Lord, and and I, and I appreciate Him over on the drums, man. You you're helping me out a lot. I I, I like just having the beat behind me. <laughs> I couldn't hear Nikki, so that's what she's doing, trying to get us some volume. Say something in yours, Nikki. Hello. 
I don't hear nothing here. Oh.
Good job, guys. Good job. Some of y'all may have heard me talking about it earlier, but uh, we actually had a wedding in here today. It was crazy. You know, you don't get a whole lot of uh, Monday noontime weddings, you know. Uh, but this was uh, this was special circumstances. Uh, uh, the the individuals that uh, that. that made their vows before God today. They are both going into the service, and uh, in order for them to stay at the same duty stations, um, they had to bump their, their wedding date up before they went. So um, the reason that I say that is because the first piece of scripture that I'm going to uh, talk about today is actually the scripture that they wanted shared uh, before they, they made their vows. And uh, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 4, and it's going to be starting with verse 9. And it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I want to just cap that off with Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, where it says, Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. It's pretty plain to see what the writers of these are is saying. We know that the writer of Ecclesiastes is 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 Solomon. As far as the 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 proverb uh, twenty seven, we're not sure who the authorship belongs to, but both are wise words. A proverb is wise words. That's uh, that's that's a given. Uh, there are proverbs other than biblical proverbs, but the iron sharpens iron, and a man sharpens another. Uh, that is that is words of wisdom. But as we look into Ecclesiastes, we know that Solomon was blessed with more wisdom than, than any other man and more wisdom than any other man would ever, ha ever have. And even though he had that wisdom, he didn't always follow didn't always follow that wisdom. Sometimes he went out on his own. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, he is the reason that the kingdom was separated because of his idolatry. But the words that he writes here are extremely wise and extremely uh, important. Not just to us, but to all people within the kingdom of God. We have to realize as we face the world that it is very, very difficult to do it alone. How many of y'all have tried to, to overcome the things that are before you, to overcome the, the problems that you have? How many of y'all have tried to do that alone? I know that I have. I know that I've done it many times. Many times I have failed. There's been once or twice that I've come out on top, but only to learn that, that it wasn't really the top. It was more like the middle, and I slid right back to where I started. So in order for us to, to truly accomplish the things that God wants us to accomplish, we have to realize that we're going to have to depend on each other. We are going to have to depend on other people within the kingdom of God. Paul writes about the, the body of Christ and the important skill sets that each and every individual within the body of Christ brings. God made us diverse and different on purpose so that we could, so that we could cover up each other's weaknesses. My strength may be your weakness and vice versa. So it is important that we, we come and we, 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 we share ourselves with each other. Now, when we're all doing well, when we're all doing good, we're very, very good at that. 
We look in, in, in the, the Christian community and we see that when people are doing well in the church, they are getting accolades, they're getting pats on the back. The pastor's saying, that a boy, I'm so proud of what you are doing. You are doing great. You are a great member of the body of Christ. You are helping the congregation. You are lifting everyone up. But when that thing happens, that thing happens, the thing happens that, that, that all people fall into, that sin happens and that sin is made public, what happens? So many times that pastor, that church, let's take it outside the walls of the church, that chapter, that house, those people that were there holding up the person who was doing so well, saying you're doing great, all of a sudden that person who falls, that person who sins, that person who makes a mistake is all alone. And the problem with that is twofold. The first part of the problem are the people that were giving the accolades, the people that were giving the pat on the back, the people that were giving the that of boys. All of a sudden, they want to distance themselves from that sin. They don't want to be associated with that. See, but that's not what Jesus Christ wants us to be. That's not what Jesus Christ wants us to do. Where did Jesus Christ go when he walked this earth? Who was it that Jesus Christ ran with? Who was it that Jesus Christ healed? Who was it that Jesus Christ surrounded himself with? Jesus Christ surrounded himself with the sinners. And he did it so that he could make them better. He did it so that he could make them stronger. He did it so that they could realize that he was the answer. As the church, as the body of Christ, that is exactly what we need to do. When those sins are made public, when those sins happen, when the person falls, as opposed to running away from them and distancing ourselves because we are ashamed of the thing that that person has done, even though we're probably doing it somewhere in a deep, dark corner of our lives. What we need to do is we need to run to that person. This scripture right here from Solomon, the wise man. It says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. If we are running away from those who are failing, we're not doing what we are supposed to be doing. I don't know how many times I've seen someone slip. And they just continue to shh. That doesn't mean that we ignore the sin. It doesn't mean that we, we, we say that it is, it is fine. It doesn't mean that we don't hold that person accountable. But what it does mean is it does mean that we show the love of Christ. It means that we forgive. It means that we instruct. It means that we show and we share the things that we have done to be successful against those same problems so that they may be successful. Because they're not going to overcome it on their own. They need your help. They need my help. They need the help of the believer. They need the help of of, of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, they are going to turn to the other answers. And we know that those other answers provide nothing but trouble. You know, oftentimes the sin, the, the thing that it is that we do, no matter what it may be, is merely a symptom of a larger problem. Through being there for our brothers and our sisters, and through being there, through counseling, through helping, through lifting up, not only are we strengthening the one that falls, but we are strengthening ourselves. We are reinforcing the things that God has shown us and that God has instructed us. As most of y'all know, I have 22 years of addiction. This month, I will have eight years of sobriety. Thank you. Thank you. It's not me. It's Jesus Christ. And it's the people around me. You know why the Lord puts me in front of people that battle addiction? Do you know why the Lord puts me in front of those who are in need? So that he can remind me each and every day of where I if I don't pay attention to him. One of the strongest tools that we have to stay on that path is to help those that have come off and fallen off of that path. Those that have gone and they're not going through the straight and the narrow gate. When we can grab onto them and we can pull them back into God's favor, we can pull them back into God's will. 
when we can, when we can help them, we are strengthening our resolve to be better at whatever it is that we are fighting. God has given each and every one of us a gift. God has given us each and every one something that can help our brothers and sisters. God has given every single one of us the power to be an advocate for Jesus Christ. But we run from it. Why do we do it? Well, because one, we're worried about what other people might say. Oh my gosh, so-and-so, so-and-so relapsed. And, and, and guess what? I saw Terry in the car with him. That means Terry must be using too. Terry, Terry's going to be gone as well. We've got to get past that. We've got to get past the rumors. We've got to get past the conjecture. We've got to get past the worrying about what everyone else thinks. And we've got to get down to the truth of the matter. We're either going to be helpers and we're either going to be advocates and we're either going to be lifters or we are going to be cowards. Because we are scared of what the world might think. If you feel like you're putting yourself in the line of fire, if you feel like you're putting yourself in a place of danger, don't do it. Don't do it alone. Notice that the scripture also says here at the very end, it says that a threefold cord is not quickly broken. It means that you have other people within the body of Christ that you can come and you can assist with. God has created an army of believers to do just that, to be the example and to help others. We take such joy in seeing other people fail. How many times, how many of y'all, and I'm going to raise my hand first, have taken joy in seeing someone fail one, at least once? How many of y'all have gossiped about someone? How many of y'all have talked about someone? How many of y'all have, 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 have buried someone because of their mistakes? Yet when the table is turned and we're the ones making the mistake, we're like, where are all my friends? Where are all the people that said they were supporting me? The same place you were when they needed their support. If we are truly going to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, we will be with our neighbor in their time of crisis. We will be with our neighbor in their time of need. As a matter of fact, when asked how many times should we forgive, Jesus Christ said seven times 77, which means as many times as it takes. How many times have you failed before you got success? How many times did you stumble before the Lord before you saw the light? How many times did it take you to get it right? And how many of y'all are walking that thin line right now of messing up again? See, we pile stress on us. We pile problems on us. We pile all the things of the world on top of us. And we want to isolate and we want to be alone. We, we don't want to share our vulnerabilities with our brothers and our sisters. See, this is part two of the problem. Part two of the problem is our own pride and our own fear of opening up and seeming weak. One of the scriptures that I shared with the men that we, we disciple this past week is the shortest piece of scripture in the entire Bible. And it says, Jesus wept. Jesus felt pain. Jesus felt sorrow. Jesus felt anger. Jesus felt isolation. Jesus felt all the things that you were feeling. And Jesus felt those things so that you wouldn't have to. We put ourselves in those prisons. We separate ourselves from our support systems. We separate ourselves from the very thing that is going to make us successful. And we do it because we're scared that someone might think that we're weak. Truth of the matter is, if you look at the entire salvation process, the first step is repentance. 
the admitting that we're doing something wrong and walking away from it. And then the second part is submission. Submission to God who is greater than we. Yet in our westernized society, we've made those two things signs of weakness. Well, I'm here to tell you today that two of the strongest things that you can ever do in your life is repent and surrender. And it's something that you are going to have to do over and over and over again if you truly walk with Jesus Christ. Every day there is repentance and every day there is surrender. But every time you repent and every time that you surrender, God gives you the strength to get through those things that you need to get through. And oftentimes those, that strength comes in the form of something that you would never expect. That strength may come in the form of a homeless man who needs help. That strength may come in the form of someone that you swore was your worst enemy. That strength may come in the form of a child that stands before you and brings the truth to your eyes. We've got to get better at these things if we want to get better at life. That's the goal. The goal is to get through this so that we can get to where God wants us, which is with Him. To help those that are in need. Don't be afraid to help those that have stumbled. Don't be fearful of what others may say about you. Because in the end, it does not really matter. Lord knows what people say about me. And I'm not your shining example either. But what they say is not important. Are you willing to do like Jesus did and leave the 99 so that you can help that one? And then on the other side of the coin, you've got something that's eating at you, if you've got something that's piling up on you, if you've got something that is about to lead you down the path of disaster, God has given you all sorts of alarm systems. I know when I'm going down that path, it starts out as a little beep, 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 beep. Then I go a little bit further, it's like beep, 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 beep. And then finally it's like wah, wah, wah. Listen to the warning signs. Listen to the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. And if you've got those things going on in your life now, seek the help that God has put before you. God has blessed us with each other. We may not think so all the time. <laughs> There's many times that I just want to bless people. But the truth of the matter is that we are blessed with each other. We are blessed with the body of Christ. And this scripture rings very true. Two of us are stronger than one. Three of us become almost unbreakable. And if we can truly unite and truly lift and truly be there for each other, we can be the examples that, that God wants us to be. When I'm gone and I'm laying in the box that they give me, I'm going to make it a big Adidas shoe box. It's going to be my coffin. But when I'm laying in that box, I don't want people to say, there's a perfect man, because they'd be lying. What I want people to say is, there's a man who cared about other people. There's a man who was willing to help when he could. There's a man who had a desire to serve God. There's a man that didn't give two flips about what other people thought about him. We 
We've got to get over ourselves and get into God if we want to be successful. I want to see each and every person here, each and every person watching, each and every person that I come in contact with, I desire to see them be successful, no matter what that success looks like. See, we may think that our problems are are greater than others. We may think that, that other people just don't understand, but guess what? Every single person that you run into on the street is going through something. They may not admit it, they may not show it, but there is something that they are struggling with. If we can just open up, if we can just share, if we can just listen, and if we can just pray and offer the assistance that we can, and then offer the resources that we know about, God has given us the ability to be helpful. God has given us the ability to be helped. And we can be both at the same time. We can be helped and we can be helpful. So as we go out this week, don't isolate those who have stumbled Don't isolate those who have failed in your mind. Don't isolate those who are in need of the help the most. And at the same token, don't isolate yourself. Try being vulnerable. Try repentance. Try submission. You may find that you just, you like it. It's amazing what happens when we unload our burdens and we give them to the one that can truly help us. So as we go out this week, let's stop being selfish. Let's stop being self-centered. And let's realize that hurt and pain is real. Both ours and the person that we're looking at the person that we're gossiping about, the person that we're pointing at, the person that we're turning our backs on. Because the pain that they're feeling, you could very well be the one feeling it next. Y'all dig? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord, and I thank you for the, the abilities that you give us, Lord. I thank you for the struggles. I thank you for the pain. I thank you for the things that you have allowed us to overcome. I thank you for the mighty ways that you have shown yourself in each and every one of our lives, Lord. And Lord, I pray that if there's anyone struggling today, Lord, that they seek the help that they need. I also pray that if there's anyone here that can offer the help, that they give it freely. It's amazing the dynamic that you have built here within your people. It's amazing how our differences can benefit the body as a whole. It's amazing how you've made the the helpless helpful and how you've made the hopeless a beacon of hope through your grace and through your mercy, Lord. Thank you for taking us and making us into things that we never thought we would be. Thank you for lifting us to new heights. Thank you for bringing us into your truth. Thank you for allowing us to see you work through the struggles that we face. And Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here who is not in that place of repentance, that has not come to that place of submission, that has not come to know the love that can only come through your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray, I pray with all my heart, I pray that they pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins, Lord. Come into my heart and save me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit till it overflows. For I know that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, 
come live, suffer, and die for me. And that precious blood that he spilled, it washes my sins, past, present, and future, Lord, so that I may be able to stand before you. And when your son was on that criminal's cross, And he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He was talking about me. Lord, thank you for removing that guilt. Thank you for removing that shame. And as he handed his last breath over, they took him from that cross and they put him in that borrowed grave. He defeated that grave when he rose on the third day, guaranteeing me through my faith and through his grace Life eternal. Defeating the world. Defeating, defeating the, 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 the evil one. Defeating all the things that, that I feel helpless against. Giving me victory. From there he walked this earth for 40 days. Sharing himself and sharing his message with all those who would receive it. Until finally he ascended into heaven in front of over 500 witnesses. Where he now sits on the right hand side of the Father as my advocate. As the one who has felt shame. As the one who has felt embarrassment. As the one who has felt deserted. As the one who has taken beatings as the one who has, who has faced all the things that I could ever imagine and understands victory. He is my advocate. He is my source. He is my healing. He is my salvation. He is my answer. I give myself to you, mind, heart, body, spirit, and soul. I belong to you. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. If any of y'all said that prayer, or if any of y'all need prayer, if any of y'all need anything, please let us know. Pastor Scott, I got to say one thing here before we sing this song. Your message went right with what happened with me three, four hours ago. I, w I went grind staff key over here, kept aggravating me and aggravating me about getting a car. So I went over there and you know how car salesmen are, they, oh, I can do this and do this and do this. And we got off in his office while, while they was running everything, while they doing everything. And start talking a little bit about our personal lives and I said, man, you got any kids? He said, he said, no, I'm with the wrong one. And uh, I said, with the wrong one? He said, yeah. He said, I've got a girlfriend at home. And he said, I ain't supposed to be talking about my personal life with you here. But he started crying. And I said, and he know, he know that, I, that I played at church. He knew I went to church. And he knew I had to come to church tonight. And he just seen, not Daniel, but God through me, that he could sit there and spill out something that he ain't got to talk to nobody about. And I just sat there and listened. I mean, and, and I think it helped him more than anything. Just, he says, I ain't got nobody to talk to about it. And he asked me for a place to get his wife into a rehab. And, or not his wife, but his girlfriend. I gave him a few phone numbers and stuff, but... Just sitting there hearing the hurt, his voice, and the tears, and him saying, please don't go, go out there and say nothing, because I ain't supposed to say nothing, but we're sitting in his office, and he poured out his heart right there to me, right there in his office, a car salesman, that is, so, but 10 minutes before that, he was all running around, I mean, you couldn't see it on the outside, but the inside was hurting, so let's pray for him, his name was Tim, so just keep him in your prayer. Father, open up my eyes. So 
not have been more appropriate. I mean, think about it. We were just talking about repentance, submission, being there for others as they fall down, as they fall short, wanting to, 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 to be the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And the thing is, we don't plan this stuff. They have no idea what I was going to preach about. Heck, I don't even know if I knew what I was going to preach about. But uh, they have no idea what I'm going to preach about. I have no idea what they're going to sing about. But look at it like this. The, the words of that song is, Lord, I want to be washed clean. Every single one of us wants that. Every single one of us wants that. You know, we were talking about being there for the one that's messed up, that's stumbled. Do you think that that person does not know that they messed up? Think about it. They don't need you to confirm the fact that they have screwed up. When I screw up, I'm pretty sure I screw up. Because when I screw up, I screw up big. Yep. <laughs> you hear my wife back there? Yep. Sure does. 
loser. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing is, we also know those little nagging things that we have that are building up inside of us. And if we could let those things go and truly be washed clean, we can be something so phenomenal. And I'm talking to myself right now. I'm talking to myself. We all have things. Let's be there for each other. I don't know any other way to put it, but let's just be there for each other. I love each and every one of y'all. I want y'all to know that. Despite your flaws, despite your shortcomings, I love y'all. If y'all need anything, please come. Please let us know. That's what we're here for. That's what a church is supposed to be. You can put bells and whistles and fancy things all around it, but if it doesn't have the love of Christ, it's not what a church is supposed to be. So just like we do every service, we're going to close with prayer requests. Do we have any prayer requests that came in online? Nothing online. All right, then let's just pray for everything. What's that? Mm. We'll definitely be in prayer. We'll definitely be in prayer. I, I hate that word, cancer. I truly do. Let's be in prayer for, for him. Let's be in prayer for, uh, you know, let's be in prayer for everyone in Oxford because everyone in Oxford is struggling with something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in Oxford. Guess what? Let's be in prayer for all those people that aren't in Oxford because they're struggling with something too. Let's be in prayer for our, 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 our nation. Let's be in prayer for our leadership. Are you serious? Well, let's be in prayer for Chris. I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to let us in. But well, let's be in prayer for him. Be in prayer for Casey and Sterling. I tell you what, every time I pray for Sterling, I, I just, you know how I said sometimes the Lord puts people in front of you so that you can gain strength, even though you're the one that's supposedly helping? Every time I look at Sterling, I gain strength. That little, that little guy is just over a year old, and man, he has fought more fights than, than I think I'll ever fight before I get to my grave. Little guy's holding on, being strong, though. He's a strong little boy. So let's be in prayer for him. Let's be in prayer for his brother. Let's be in prayer for each other. Let's just pray that we can learn to love the way that we're supposed to love, to strengthen the way that we're supposed to strengthen, to discipline the way that we're supposed to discipline, and most of all, to lift up the way that we're supposed to lift up. Let's close out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as always, we thank you for the time that you've blessed us with, Lord. Lord, you have called us to gather. You have called us to amass. You have called your people to do your things. Let us do your things. Let's set our things to the side. And as we do your things, Lord, I pray that you put a hedge around us because we are going to be attacked from every direction. Because your things don't match the world's things. But you knew that, and you have given us the abilities and the strength to withstand all things through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us walk with that hedge of protection, knowing that you will not let us be harmed, knowing that you will allow us to fight that good fight. Let us get out and be the fighters that you want us to be. Let us listen when we need to listen. Let us speak when we need to speak. Let us take action when we need to move. And let us set back when we need to assess the situation. But let us do all of these things through the guidance that you have provided us.
through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for blessing us. And thank you for making us more than we ever thought we could be. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.